Hi everyone, welcome back. A little bit breezy this morning, but we've got a nice blue sky as you can see. And this is the first sunny day that I've enjoyed down on the plot, probably for about four to six weeks. It's been very wet, the ground's still a little bit damp this morning, um, but there's not really, really been a, a great deal for me to do. It's been wet and overcast, cold, quite a bit of frost as well. And as you can see on the first and second plots, the only things that are growing now are the overwintering crops. The sprouts, the leeks, the parsnips. We do have down here in this left hand corner the overwintering onions. You can see that they are coming on okay. The shallots have just broken ground as well. So uh, they were a little bit slow in firing, but I'm, I'm pleased that they are uh, on the way now. On the no-dig plot, a few beetroot left. Uh, we might salvage maybe five or six there for lunch. Carrots are still doing okay, and um, no significant carrot fly damage or anything like that. So uh, all in all, it's uh, looking okay. The first and second plot are pretty tidy. If we just turn over to the third and fourth plot, we might get quite a little bit of uh, glare from the sun. But again, everything's okay. It's very, very bare now. And it doesn't seem like two minutes ago that we had a bed full of dahlias and gladioli and sunflowers, but they're all gone now. We've just got the tops of the gladioli just dying back, but all the gladi the dahlias, sorry, have uh, been taken up. Down here, under the blue netting, we've got the broad beans, and they've broken ground as well. We put them in later this year. Last year we put them in a little bit too early and as a result they were quite leggy by the time the, the bad weather came in winter and as a result a lot of them were uh, damaged uh, with the weight of the snow as well that we had. Um, we still had a decent crop but um, I don't want that to happen again this year. So we put them in maybe a month, five weeks later and as I say, they're on their way as well. The fruit allotment needs some urgent attention, but what with work and the really poor weather, I've not been able to uh, get down and do the final bit of weeding down there. So um, the manure mulch has been thinning and the weeds have started to and continue to grow. So um, that's probably the biggest job uh, ahead of me perhaps before Christmas. So uh, we'll take a quick look in maybe the greenhouses now and we'll, we'll see what's happening there. We're in the 10 by 10 greenhouse now and we've only really got two greenhouses that are still productive and that's the 10 by 10 and the 16 by 8 and in here on one side of the greenhouse we've got some mustard leaf, some spring onions that have been set <coughs> excuse me, into a tray, some spring cabbage that um, has yet to be planted out and um, that may go into one of the beds on the nodig plot and then a little bit higher up we've got some spring onions and we've got some sweet pea as well. On the right side of the greenhouse we've still got the squash. Uh, the numbers are being gradually depleted as we've uh, taken them home. I keep checking on them and we've only had one that's uh, started to rot and that was a, an Oshiki curry, one of the orange ones down here. Uh, but the rest have been okay and uh, my cousin's been taking some as well. But as soon as it looks like, um, you know, either the weather's going to be really, really bad and the temperatures are going to plummet, or else I see one or two others starting to rot, then I'll uh, start and take them home in earnest and they'll be prepared and frozen. 
not much else in this greenhouse, as I say, just the, the squash. Biding the time. We're in the 16x8 now, and as you can see, I've started to take some of the lettuce leaf. That's doing okay. Uh, it's not really growing very much now, now that the temperatures have dropped. So we're, we're just taking it as we need it. And to be honest, it's hardly been watered. It might get watered maybe once every 10 days or something like that. The spring onion that we have in here as well, they're okay. They'll keep probably until February, hopefully. And uh, as and when they're big enough, we'll take them. And then we've got some baby spinach leaf here. It's not been planted out into the beds uh, outside, and I may, I may do, I may put some in. Um, but it's just been allowed to grow on, and the idea is that we'll just take a handful of leaves um, and use them in cooking. Looking at the larger part of the 16 by 8 you can see that the overwintering pak choy is doing really well and the stalks at the base of the leaves are really starting to uh, thicken up and they look nice and crisp and I brought a couple of bags down and uh, I shall be uh, thinning some of this foliage out and it will be used in the coming week for stir fries. But it looks rather nice. If we just stand up, oh dear. you can see it's all looking really quite healthy and with plenty to go at. And uh, it seems to be faring quite well in these deep trays as well, which uh, as I said previously um, are about 12 or 13 centimetres deep. So uh, there's plenty of soil in there to keep them happy. Well, that's a couple of bags of lettuce and pak choy picked. And I have to say the lettuce looks really, really well. One of the advantages of growing it in trays like that, in compost, is that it stays really clean. If it had been in the ground, uncovered, over the last four to six weeks it would have been ruined, there'd have been uh, nothing left because uh, it's been so wet it'd have been bedraggled and the slugs would have eaten a lot of it as well I think so uh, it's definitely uh, worthwhile trying to grow them in trays uh, into the winter and the leaf that we've got left I would imagine will last us well into the new year I've not sown any more lettuce for the last month or so um, and then I'll start sowing again probably in February, something like that. The pak choy on the other hand, whilst it looks really lovely and it's nice and crisp, uh, because you have to snap the leaves off down at soil level, you tend to pick up a little bit of compost. So uh, whilst they'll both be washed prior to eating, um, the pak choy will probably need to be washed individually each leaf washed just to make sure that they're nice and clean prior to uh, being chucked into a stir fry so that's the lettuce i need to go and uh, pick some winter veg now maybe a few parsnips and a couple of leeks it's a little bit too messy to film it as i do it and i don't have a tripod on me so uh, i'll get on with that and i'll show you what i uh, take up catch you in a minute Hi again, just about to leave for my Sunday lunch now, uh, but before I do that I thought I'd show you the, the things that I've picked, uh, but also just give you a quick look at the elephant garlic. I did two beds if you remember, um, one with larger cloves and one with medium sized cloves, and as you can see, I think this is the one with the, the larger cloves, and we're already about five or six inch high with the emerging plants and they all look really healthy as well I think they've all fired I don't know how well you can see them through the uh, the cloche net but um, without exception I think I think we've got three rows of about ten 
or thereabouts, 9 or 10. But that's one bed, that looks okay. The other bed looks alright as well. I think these were the smaller clothes and I would have to say, although it's uh, very early, I would have to say that these actually are a little bit smaller and not quite as robust. There are one or two that are quite chunky but the rest I would say they're like four inch and a little bit thinner and uh, a nice bunch of spring onions at the bottom there uh, which we'll uh, start taking before too long and into the new year as well. So yeah not really much to report on the no dig plot. We have started to uh, mound up the manure there's more than enough there I would say um, this will actually spread around the corner a little bit and then we're going to start covering the rest of this bed we've left the dahlias in the ground this year and they're going to get mulched with manure there's a little bit of grass starting to encroach so it's clearly that time of the year when the bed needs to be covered to prevent any uh, further spread of weeds It'll only be a two minute job to remove the few bits of grass that are in there. I don't think there's anything else in there. Right, so we'll take a look at the veg and then we'll call it a day. And this is my uh, haul for today. I've got two leeks, three nice parsnips. I think one's an Albion and two a Gladiator. Quite a few uh, carrots, although they're all kinds of shapes at this time of year. Uh, starting to be a little bit of damage as well, but not, not very much. The leeks have suffered a little bit in the the bad weather that we've had because it's been wet for so long. Um, a lot of the outer leaves uh, above ground are a little bit uh, grey, so they've got to be taken off. You take a few off anyway. A few spring onions there, a couple of squash. Just took up the last of the potatoes out of one of the beds uh, on the new half plot, and some sprouts. And these are the biggest disappointment really I would say this year because they're not very clean um, my wife's not very happy when she's peeling these and neither am I when I do it either um, because you think you're going to take a, a leaf off the outside and then they're going to be clean but often the white fly damage is uh, penetrated you know a few leaves in um, but that's how things are uh, that's the season that we've had, we had such a dry summer, three months, three and a half months of uh, really strong heat and drought and uh, the white fly has flourished and it's still there on the plants, although we've removed most of the foliage. So uh, that's my veg for today, I think that's all of it, it's enough. Right, um, and I think we'll call it today. Yep, that's it uh, for today. Just take the opportunity just to say thank you for watching and subscribing. Um, it's a little bit bleak at the minute on the plot. As I say, it's been so wet, I've not been able to get onto the ground, do any weeding, any tidying up or anything like that. Um, but if it dries out a little bit, then uh, we'll make a little bit more progress. There are a few jobs to do. The raspberry canes need to be cut back, weeding as I say, um, the grass if we get a couple of dry days that might get cut as well um, but beyond that really it's down to uh, collecting manure and spreading manure um, and then in the new year we'll uh, make a start trying to uh, get the new half plot into some kind of shape so in the new year we may have some updates showing you the progress that we make there so thanks again for watching thanks for subscribing and uh, I'll catch you again soon all the best